Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about what are two-dimensional materials and how to perform simulations on two-dimensional materials using Vampire. In particular, I want to talk about the phenomena of persistent magnetization found in two-dimensional materials, which was thought to be impossible to achieve. So first I want to talk about the motivation behind studying two-dimensional materials, in particular 2D magnets. So on the right, we have a figure showing the amount of data created, captured, copied, and consumed worldwide by electronic devices. And we can see that the trend is, a, is an exponential curve, and the growth has become more prominent in recent years due to the development of advanced technologies such as, such, such as AI-powered features. So some of you might have already known that certain AI feature technology such as, such, as, such as AI drawing allows you to generate a stunning piece of art in just seconds. And the amount of data, of course, will take a considerable about amount of space and storage. So as a result, it is expected that global storage will achieve approximately 180 zettabytes, which one zettabyte is 10 to the 12 gigabyte in 2025 and we'll store those data in 16 terabyte hard drives, which is which has a very large storage capacity, but still maintains it relatively budget friendly. It still requires 4.6 billion hard drives to store them. And if we connect those hard drives head to tail into a long array, the distance of that array will reach 1.7 times Earth moon distance. So this implies that we are forced to dispose part of the our, part of our data since storage capacity versus price remains very high. So another key factor that we want to study 2D magnets are the energy consumption of storing these devices. So as you might expect, similar to the exponential growth of data storage, the amount of energy spent on storing this data grow exponentially as well. So the source said the estimated global data center energy consumption in 2022 was about 240 to 340 terawatt hours. And equivalently, that's 1 to 1.3 percent of global final electricity demand. And we compared that with the electricity that London, which is a mega city with about 9 million population, used about 37.8 terawatt hours in 2018. So that is only one sixth of the global storage uh, energy consumption. So therefore, we need cheaper, lighter, and more energy, energy efficient materials for the zettabyte era of storing storage devices. So in that context, two-dimensional vendor wall materials is our new exciting playground for advanced theoretical and, expo and ex experimental exploration due to their potential in achieving higher advanced magnetic, magnetic storage devices. So in the end, what are 2D materials? Below I've listed a few properties of 2D materials. So first is that topologically 2D materials are the thinnest material ever found with large surface area printed to the same number of atoms. And we have also seen interesting physical phenomena on them. For example, possible unconventional superconductivity on twisted bilayer graphene at magic angle was discovered in 2018. And most importantly of our interest, magnetizations are actually possible on 2D materials. So we can have 2D vendor walls magnets. Various interesting applications have been proposed on the above mentioned properties. For example, data storage with skirmionic devices has been proposed to achieve better performance and lower energy consumption. And in those devices, the data bits are stored in skirmions and anti-skirmions, which has non-zero distinct topological number and spin configuration and therefore they are very stable under topological protection. We could also have spintronic devices with magnetoresistant effects to build microelectronic devices, or photodetectors on optical applications, or a new drug delivery system utilizing the large surface area of 2D materials to better control the drug release speed. With all these fascinating properties and possible applications on 2D materials, I would like to focus on our interest of 2D magnets. So it was first discovered on experiments on chromium germanium telluride or CGT material. In that paper, the authors consecutively decreased the number of layers from bulk into a single layer CGT. And we can notice that the crossover temperature which separates the ordered and disordered state decreases from around 70 Kelvin to 
around 20 Kelvin in single layer state, but still does not reach zero. So this shows that we still have magnetization on on average an ordered state below this crossover temperature, which seems to be contradicting to what Merman Wagner theorem predicts. But like, why is the case? So let's talk about what Merman Wagner theorem is about first. It applies to system with rotational invariance. In our case, it means that if a system undergoes a rotation of spins, for example, they start with this state and then the spins rotate by theta degrees, it ends up with this state. And the Hamiltonian corresponding to that system. In our case, we only ex consider the exchange interaction, but no anisotropy or other interactions or energy terms. And then because we have a dot product between the spins, and then the dark part of the state is invariant under rotation of spins. And we can see that Hamiltonian, therefore, is the same before and after the rotation. So the Hamiltonian is invariant. And then we can say that the system is rotational invariant because of Hamiltonian is invariant. Then Merman Wagner theorem applies in those isotropic systems. So in those rotational invariant system, and in the original paper by Murmur Wagner in 1966, it was stated that for a mathematically small field H, the average magnetization S goes as 1 over logarithm, logarithm of H in an absolute value. So for H very small, this goes as 1 over infinity, so S has to be very small for two dimensions. So it predicts that the magnetization is zero, has no order state in two, dim in two dimensional materials. And similarly, for one dimensions, S goes as H to the one third, and for very small H, S approaches zero. So it cannot have order state in two one dimension as well. Thankfully, this is not the end of the world, and we have ways to bypass this limitation to get 2D magnets. First, we can invoke anisotropy into the system. So if a material possesses lattice anisotropy, the anisotropy breaks the rotation, rotational asymmetry and gives rise to magnetic order. Now, alternatively, we can realize that Merman Wagner theorem only applies in the thermodynamic limit, which we take the number of particles n into infinity. So it is just wrong for finite size system as the number of atoms would be finite. So if we have a finite size system, then the strong finite size effect will produce a large spin correlation length. And if the correlation length is significantly larger than the system size, then the spins on the edge of the system are still in correlation, and hence the system possesses a, a non-zero magnetization on average, which implies that 2D magnets are feasible under finite sizes. So here I have adopted a figure from Sarah's previous paper, and we can see that the curvy temperature graph does indeed have a non-zero crossover temperature, and hence a magne magnetic order. The data points fits perfectly well with the curvy block equation, and then they also match quite well with the mean field approximations from an anisotropic spherical model, shown in the show, show in the solid region. It is worth noting that search magnetic ordering is independent of system symmetry. So even though uh, we only show the honeycomb case, the other symmetries like hexagonal, um, cubic, they are the same. It, it is a general result. So in conclusion of the theoretical part, we have seen that even though only exchange interaction is present, the spin correlation length can be much larger than the system length, which means that we do have 2D magnets without anisotropy, and that is regardless of lattice symmetry. And after that, I have a few acknowledgments, and then also thank you all for your attention. Now let's us uh, move on to the actual simulation with vampire. All right, so let us do a quick example of how you would simulate a two-dimensional material. So first you want to maybe try to start with the simple one. So you download the vampire workshop GitHub from GitHub, the sample files. You go to the input files, go to intro. You go to the curry temperature and you want to use that because we want to do a simple example on curry temperature. You can then copy these files into a into a separate folder and then modify based on that. So what I've done here is I've already done this modification for the input file. 
As you can see here, I've changed the crystal structure to HCP, uh, the hexagonal lattice. You can also use Kagome or um, or a cube or the square lattices or the, the other possible options if you want. I have uh, increased the unit cell size from 3.54, the default one, to 10 angstroms to reduce the number of atoms being simulated to save some simulation time. And I have changed the system size to 10 by 10 nanometers. And I have um, reduced the system size on the axis to one angstrom. You notice that the system size on the axis is smaller than the unit cell size because the, the built-in crystal structure, the built-in HCV crystal structure is multi-layered. Um, crystal structure and I only want to simulate one layer so I if I so when I do when I have a smaller system system size on Z than the unit cell size then only part of the unit cell will be rendered and in our case only the bottom crystal structure with bottom HCP, HCP unit cell will be rendered and that is a single layer layout I also have this uh, create boundary conditions on X, y, X and Y axes so such that uh, the boundary can, such as the bounce finite size effects will be minimized and then that will bring us better results. I have modified the material file to use the material.mat which you will see in the next part and I have changed the minimum temperature for Curry's temperature, Curry temperature simulation to go from 0k up to 100k with 5k as increment and I, I want to do to 20,000 times 20,000 times that for equilibration and then 5,000 times that for looping the magnetization to get an average and I want to do one time step per increment one time step for increments I use I want to do Curry temperature simulation and Monte Carlo integrator I want to get these outputs the column headers tell tells us which what are, the, what are the quantity names, the real-time temperature of the current system, and then magnetization. So that will bring us MX and more MZ and then a, a mean value for them. And, no, the magnitude of that magnetization. And then I want to also get a configuration of the atoms to use that for visualization in Paraview. And now let us modify the material file. So First thing we want to do is I want to remove this comment because I don't want to confuse other it's it is still nickel. It is not nickel now. But the material name and material element I will keep it as nickel because I want to view the atoms in Paraview a program later and Paraview needs a material name and material element to be the to be an actual element, for example, on chromium or nickel or something else in order to show it properly, so I'll just keep it as nickel. You can you try like Fe iron or something else, it's the same. Uh, damping constant I change it to 0.1, exchange matrix I will do 5 times 10 to the negative 12, ne negative 22 um, joules per link, and I'll do two more magnetons. I don't have anisotropy, I only have exchange interaction, so I'm going to remove that line, and this is our material file. Okay, the simulation has ended and I it took longer than I expected because I had OBS open in my background, but um, now it has finished and let's see. So, let us open the output file. Okay, so we run from 5 to 100k and then magnetization is started from 1 and it reduces to 50. That's the lowest point and then it bounces a little bit back up. Okay, so let us plot that data and see how it looks. So we use new plots, and I'm going to use the um, same plotting, same plotting tech, same plotting, plotting commands that Richard Evans was using, and to make sure you don't get any anything new, anything unknown. Okay, and then we are going to to see. Okay, so we can see that the magnetization versus time, no, versus temperature graph decreases and then hits say curry temperature I would say around 55 or so and then bounces back up a little bit. So it is a common thing that for this type of two-dimensional materials that, uh, that are close to the curry temperature that you need actual 
actually a lot a lot of more time and more, more computation to make to get an accurate answer so we you know, we only use 20k for equilibrium and then 5 5k for for loop time step which is just not that enough and also uh, they also because the system size we're using are extremely small if you get larger system size larger system sizes and and then you you see and then your unit cells are defined to be to better then you'll get better results as well so but let us um let's just see how okay let us fit that with um block curve block equation so we'll do uh, mfx mfx equals to uh, if x actually less than tc then then it uh, equals one minus x over tc to the beta power and if it's not it's greater than tc or equal then it's zero let's say tc is, is um 50 around that and beta is 0 0.5 for 2d materials Now fit M of X with the output. Okay, we can actually see that it's um it fits to TC is around fifty one and then beta is about zero point four seven. Okay, I don't want that, but let me just print the fitting. Okay, you can actually see it if it's most it fits mostly well in the in a non zero part. In a, in a low temperature part and uh, it's all uh, you at the current temperature you need better fitting you need better computation that's what you would expect, expect and if you want to confirm your results you could do VDC XYZ and then you can open up the um, open up the crystal structure in pair view to verify that you're actually simulating the desired system configuration that you want to do okay so it has bring up this um this window when when power will try when the pharaoh sees an xyz file so for our case i will just use the xyz reader and i will hit open and we'll see what it, we'll see this screen we click on the i button in front of the crystal the xyz and we'll hit apply and you can see now that it's already showing it and we want to show it better we can do scroll down this on display menu and we increase the atom radius factor for example 2.5 okay so now it's more prominent and if you, you can um if you, you can click and, and scroll your mouse to see the like the 3d overview but you can also click 3d again to change it to 2d overview to change it to a 2d view and then view it as uh, view it from positive view from positive View in the direction of negative z, so from positive z axis, and that's how you how how the system will look like. So this ends my short introductory video to two dimensional materials and simulation on that. If we have further questions that are that are unanswered in this video, please feel free to contact me or Richard Evans, the the workshop organizer, for more details. Thank you so much for your attention.